Again, thank you for allowing me to come in today. It's, uh, it's an honor and a pleasure, and it's, and it's scary because I feel like I'm talking into the dark. <laughs> for anybody that knows me, I have retinitis pigmentosa. It's advanced stages. Um, I have been diagnosed with Usher syndrome, so I also have hearing loss. Um, so today I'm going to talk about maintaining independence and what that means um, for our patients that come in and take the class with me and how we as a, you know, a department of patient support program and as you as providers that we can get our patients, you know, connected into the community and utilize resources to maintain independence due to vision loss and I'm going to say this, that losing vision can be a very traumatic experience for anybody. So the first topic that I usually cover, and it's usually the very first interest that many of our patients have, is talking about transportation. How do we maintain independence if we can't get around? So I talk about UTA and paratransit. A lot of times our patients aren't aware of the services that are available through UTA, such as contacting the mobility center and being able to um, have somebody there to help them navigate the buses and the trains and work on specific routes that they use regularly, such as figuring out how to get to track so they can get up here to our appointments. Another topic that I talk about is Lyft and Uber and many of our patients are unaware of that. Maybe there are very reasons for that. I use that service frequently, I love it, especially when I'm stuck and UTA is not available to me. Another thing that, another option is contacting the aging services through the county, which often will provide shuttle services at a very low rate for them to get to and from their appointments, whether it's a, a doctor's appointment, a social services appointment, um, anything like that. And then, and there's other organizations out there that provide access to taxi vouchers for um, a discount of 60% off. So for example, you can purchase $160 worth of taxi vouchers for $64. And they're used at many of the cab services here in Salt Lake City, City Cab, Ute Cab, Yellow Cab. And they also have those services available in many other locations throughout the state. They've got them up in Park City, they have them up in Logan, Cedar City, down in St. George, and I believe they have them out in Vernal and possibly Price. And then I also introduced them to the concept of the white cane. What is its purpose? Most of us understand that white cane is usually used for allowing a person to, you know, use and walk around. But sometimes we don't understand that a white cane is also used for helping other people around us identify and help us that if we do something embarrassing like I do, sometimes I'll walk into the wrong restroom. I'm thankful to either have my dog or my cane with me because I don't think I want women socking me in the eye. <laughs> so it's very helpful to have these tools that identify us with vision loss. So when we ask somebody for help, then sometimes people out in the community will say, well, you don't look blind. But if anybody knows me, my response is, well, you don't look stupid. <laughs> so, you know, I try to give my client or our patients here, you know, a sense of humor when it comes to dealing with situations such as these. And then also we talk about mobility instruction. Where can we go to get training for the white cane such as the Division of Services for the Blind and Vision Impaired. And there's also other organizations they can go to. Many of the guide dog schools around the country now offer um, more intense two-week or four-week training at their schools. So 
Another big issue that we talk about is, okay, how do we do our shopping? And so the first question is, I ask is, how do you identify your money? And I ask the patients what works well for them. How do we do this? How do we think outside the box so that they can identify different denominations? Because, you know, the $1 bill and the $20 bill and the $50 bill, or, they're all the same size. But sometimes there's different techniques that would work for different patients, such as folding the denomination in a certain way or putting it in a certain location in their wallet or their purse. And I also talk about how to safely use debit and credit cards because sometimes these um, machines can be very tricky um, because I've had a patient one time who just gives his card to the cashier, you know, to swipe his card, but then he also verbally tells them what his pin is. And that can be pretty, you know, nerve-wracking for me. I mean, I'm not sure I want to disclose some, you know, personal information like that. So we discuss, okay, how do we do this and still maintain independence and maybe asking people, where's the keypad? How can I identify the different numbers on the keypad so that they can enter their pin number for themselves? And then we have everyday shopping. Sometimes we do the same thing day in and day out. So maybe you go to the same grocery store and knowing where your layout of your store and creating a shopping list for you to be able to start with, let's say dry goods, go to the meat department, the dairy department, and you know, go into your baked goods and you know, be able to um, know what's, you know, where things are. Also being able to willing to ask for assistance because many of the stores there will ask, uh, will have customer service available so that you can go up and ask somebody to assist you for shopping. And sometimes people are more comfortable taking a close friend or a family and that's okay. And then I also talk about food delivery, such as Winder Farms and the Community Co-op, which I have discovered that with the Community Co-op, they will deliver their foods and services for free if you are blind, so the delivery charge is waived. And then we talk about organization, especially in a pantry. Um, maybe you have one um, shelf in your pantry for all your soups and and then another for all your canned goods, like for fruit, uh, fruits or vegetables. And being able to find different ways to identify those things, like you putting a rubber band around one of the cans or using a Sharpie and initializing a T on the top of the uh, can to identify tomato soup. Otherwise, you hear stories of patients who says, oh, I just go in and open it up and surprise. <laughs> Sometimes that doesn't work well if you're making sour cream enchiladas and you need cream of chicken soup and you open up tomato soup. That's not gonna work very well. And the other way, things we talk about is organizing medications. Um, again, sometimes those lids are, are white and they can use a Sharpie again to identify their medications. Like they may put BP on it so they can identify that's their blood pressure medication. Or, um, and in some cases, pharmacies will also have um, audio uh, scripts so they can listen to the script and know what it is. So the next thing we talk about is social life. And the first thing we have is contrast cards and playing cards. Um, we do have some to, I did bring some, and if Lisa would, did I hit something? You find, oh, you're still on social life. Okay. And I didn't know you brought those up. Yeah, they're here. Okay. Here's the big contrast. Okay, and so. So here we have the oversized large cards for large print for people to use. I don't know if you can see them all the way back there, but I can't see them, so they're useless for me. That's okay. I have Braille on my card, so that works for me. 
through the high and, contrast. And then here we have the high contrast cards for people who need different um, contrast needs with lighting and be able to adapt with it. And then we have... We have dice here. High contrast dice. Big, big dice. We had a patient who loved her bunko, but her friends didn't want her to play with them anymore because she couldn't see the dice fast enough. And so, so here we got these oversized die. They're with, you know. They're tactile. They are tactile, so I can actually feel them. That's kind of cool. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there are things out there that we can identify To be able to, um, uh, let me get my fingers, to be able to get, uh, you know, see and still be able to enjoy the games that they enjoy. Um, part of this is, you know, being able to do things differently, whether it's mean using larger cards or using contrast cards. And one of the other things we talk about is when we go to venues, just because we're losing vision doesn't mean that. We can't go somewhere and enjoy, you know, the show. So, for example, if you enjoy going to community plays, call the venue ahead of time, let them know that you're blind, and then can work out seating arrangements where possibly you can sit closer to the stage where you can see better. And then also I talk about organizations that have social you know, events that are going on, such as, you know, the Utah Council of the Blind always has a monthly social gathering. They've done some really cool things, such as going to the, uh, that new place up at Leighton Hills Mall where they have the shark and the stingrays and all the fish that will do the pedicures on you and stuff and go in and, and pet those things. And, you know, or they have, you know, special entrance to the, the uh, state fair that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. So the, one of the greatest things, or the biggest things that some people come to is, okay, now I'm losing vision, how do I access information and technology? So we talk about low vision aids. Some of it could be such as what we talked about here with the with the playing cards, but there's also other things that, that are available out there, such as maybe using um, a high contrast, large print keyboards for them to be able to access their computer, or it might be about um, using magnifiers, video magnifiers, and learning how to use those to best maximize whatever vision they have left. And then I talk about accessing the library services for the blind because many of our patients like to read. And so they may not be aware of the fact that the library services for the blind will not only have just audio books, but they also have large print books of some of their favorite um, reading materials, such as the Reader's Digest. So then we talk about technology with computers, like I talked about the keyboard. We talk about magnification software that they can put on their computer to help magnify their computers, um, change the contrast, and help them feel more comfortable being able to access their computer and do the things that they always have been because they're not aware of that there's these technologies that are out there. Um, also, we talk about screen readers. I also talk about my iPhone and how that helps me, and I demonstrate some of these things for them. And then we also have descriptive video, which many people may not be aware of, is that most DVDs and Blu-rays, if you go into the language settings, you put it on descriptive video, so there's a narrator in the background that would describe motion as to what the characters are doing, as opposed to just sitting there and listening to the dialogue and trying to figure out what's going on. And many of the theaters here locally, you can go to the box office and request um, 
a listening device for video description. And one of the things I do is I tailor the needs of the group because each group comes with different dynamics. It comes with different set of patients um, depending on where they are in their stage of life. And I often invite guest speakers in. Um, for example, I'll have somebody come in to speak about technology or I'll have somebody come in from the Utah Council of the Blind or some of the other organizations to talk about their knee uh, services, what they do to, um, you know, for the blind and what they can do for them. I talk about vocational rehabilitation because some people want to be able to maintain employment but are unsure how to do it because the um, most employers are afraid of carrying the financial burden of maintaining someone who is blind or visually impaired with employment because those costs, you know, are pretty hefty. So vocational rehab services are available for them to help subsidize the cost of maintaining equipment for somebody who wants to maintain employment. And then there's independent living services, which is very similar to voc rehab, but it's more tailored for those who um, are not wanting to work, but be able to access you know, technology to, as they stay home and you know, just maintain life at home and you know, however they want to. And this very last one is probably my most emotional one to talk about is our patient feedback. And here are some of the quotes that we've gotten from our patients. It says, thank you. I am struggling as I'm moving into this new life challenge. This has been very helpful. And it says, thank you. It's always amazing to see blind, fun blind people function normally, whatever normal is. I can't define normal for you. I enjoyed the variety of topics covered. What stands out is all the all around support. That's not just from the patient support program, but the support that the patients get from each other and from with themselves. I enjoyed Darren because he made me feel comfortable. The most important part of the group is the empathy associated with the group. If I get invited to do these classes, I would, you know, get in and do it again because she enjoyed the experience. I learned not to give up. Please keep helping people. Thank you.